Hi, my name is Earl Bishop. I am the project coordinator for Mechanized Propulsion Systems Incorporated, one of the world's first mech building company. Uh, so what I do for the company is I organize people and I help design the machine. I don't do the absolute work, all the finite element analysis, assembly and stuff like that I assist on. We have a lot of other people to help us with that. Uh, mechanical engineers, welders, everything. But, uh, but you're about the mechs themselves. Okay. So you're building So mechs. we are we are building a mech. Uh, that's a pretty broad uh, definition. So what we're doing is we're designing something that's a little more industrial and the way that we uh, approach our design is very realistic. Uh, we have the, the types of equipment available that you would find in any machining shop. Um, our power source is an internal combustion engine. Uh, there's really nothing that is uh, dramatic or exceptional about the technology on the physical assembly. Um, our machine intelligence system is, is very complicated. Uh, actually, you should, you should be the money maker ultimately for the company. Uh, but we are focused on uh, producing something that is not uh, it's not Gundam. It's not powered by a nuclear reactor. Uh, it doesn't have you know uh, tank cannons on it. It is something that is designed to uh, you know unload and unload ships, load and unload airplanes, uh, assisting construction, search and rescue, firefighting, uh, anything you would find in industrial application. But at the end of the day, you're planning on building giant robot piloted by man. It's it's still a human piloted uh, vehicle. Yeah, it's it's a giant robot. Yeah. So how big are these things uh, potentially going to be? I mean, uh, you see the foot right there. It's fairly large -ish. Uh the, the foot structure for the Mark 1 is actually a little bit smaller. The Mark 2 will be our largest model for quite some time. This is actually a, a Mark 2 foot with uh, a, a Leo strut from a DC-9 aircraft. Um, the Mark 3 will be a little bit smaller. The Mark 1 was about 21 foot. The Mark 2 is about 18 feet, or it will be when we're finished. We've got about six months of labor left on it. Uh, the Mark 3 will be probably around 15 to 16 feet tall. We're still finishing off the rest of the leg design for that model. Can take a little quick look at the video you got running. You can tell me what, what we're basically looking at. Here. Sure, okay, that would be the logo, obviously. Yeah, and the logo again. So, here we're switching to uh, an animation that helps uh, promote the idea that the machine is not just built for one purpose. So, instead of you buying a bulldozer for doing construction and then a backhoe for doing construction, uh, both pieces of equipment which I own, um, having that available on one piece of equipment would be a huge boom. It saves you time, it saves you money, it saves you operator expertise and specialties. Um, our framework for our uh, machine intelligence system, as well as the machines themselves, are designed around the idea that whatever the application is, we have the ability to uh, add suitable equipment to the machine and it is adaptable. Uh, the interfaces are changeable to according to what the pilot needs. Uh, so for example, some people may feel more comfortable using uh, a non-haptic interface that uses motion capture in order to weld with the machine. Um, some people may prefer to uh, capture that information beforehand and have it scripted to a button or have the weld follow where their eye is traffic or have the, uh, the, the weld uh, controlled by voice control or any combination of those elements. Um, the way that we designed our system, the interfaces are completely abstracted from what it's actually doing. So the same machine is capable of fielding uh, a number of pieces of equipment. Uh, we have a support vehicle that goes along with it for uh, recovery repair as well as uh, any equipment that is accessories that are attached to it. Of course, this is uh, an artist representation of uh, the availability for some of these things. Uh, what we would likely do is not redevelop uh, half a dozen different robotic hands. Uh, what we would probably be doing is uh, marketing uh, the adaptability for products that already exist, such as made by Caterpillar or other industry leaders. Uh, we would tap into the existing market and knowledge of uh, available structures uh, that, that are already in use for industrial purposes. So in a horrible, horrible, you'll tell me I'm wrong analogy, I, it seems like you basically built in, you know, Guardian, Battle Royale, Moe's. Uh, again, horrible analogy. But, uh, or, or everything short of transforming, yeah, uh, yeah. Or we, we have built into the system. So, uh, And actually the, the ability to use uh, even more than two legs or more than two arms uh, is certainly feasible. We do not need to change the operating system to do that uh, because as the, the project has evolved and the products used in the utility has evolved, um, it has become uh, more and more significant use for us to uh, be able to uh, have a vehicle that every single time we change the hardware does not require a change in the software. So because of that, instead of developing a system that makes uh, this machine walk, we develop a system that designs how walking systems operate. So no matter what you throw at it, it figures out how to manage that. Um, a walking system that's purpose-built would be much quicker, but for example, if uh, force is external to the machine, uh, say the machine steps in mud, its foot now weighs a lot more than it used to. Um, that would throw off the balancing system unless you build special cases into it. So instead of us doing that, we built an adaptive framework uh, that is designed to operate around the idea that rather than have a specific answer that we know, instead we have a, a 
formula to generate answers to questions. So it's, you've got more of a, a mobile platform that yep. you can attach things to. Yes, it is a highly adaptable platform. Uh, that is the idea, and uh, use and utility of it will be pretty much what the market will bear. Okay, quick question: the, the head. I'm assuming that's some sort of camera array, but is that as much just because it looks a little cooler with a head? Um, for the Mark One, yeah, we, we did put on a head uh, simply because of the the anime effect. Our original intention was to build an anime style mecha. Uh, we kind of grew up a little bit as a company, as individuals, so that became more of an industrial purpose. Um, the idea behind the head, uh, other than pure aesthetics, is that it gives the, the best uh, possible optimal view to the operator. Uh, the test pilot is uh, generally... <laughs> Generally watching animations all the way through. Okay, um, the uh, uh, the test pilot is uh, 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 having the ability to see uh, with n number of cameras. The, the, the system was designed. Uh, it was originally called a bioptic imaging system because we wanted the ability to uh, triangulate like a human being does to recognize objects and, and guess their distance. Um, as you start developing this technology, you realize that analog data is really, really, really terrible. So you cannot rely on the data from two cameras. So we designed the system instead to be kind of more like the purpose of everything that we've done with this with the engineering. It can take as many cameras as you hand it. So the more cameras you have available, uh, the more information the system gets, and the more information the system gets, the more accurately it reads. And just submit this one. Right now, you're developing more for construction and... Yep. Uh, it's, it's more of a construction and logistics to, vehicle. Well, as opposed to, you know, strapping a bunch of... Uh, of guns missile missiles oh. to it. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we do have guys on staff that are military, a lot of guys that have been actually in military service longer than the project has been around, uh, people that have actually operated in 1A1 speaking who have you know maintained and operated attack helicopters uh, for for decades. So uh, what that means is that we've got a tap to uh, people who can advise us that uh, provide us with the opportunity to uh, take existing military hardware, not developing anything new, and be able to make sure that there is a possibility for placement of it on the machine. We're not designing uh, military machines outright, uh, but we do have our eye on the, the eventual dollar signs that, that honestly military contracts bring to the table. All right, and in the meantime, here hold this up as you're saying it. Where can people find you? At mechaps.com www.mechaps.com. All right, thank you very much.